So let's learn how to create an object inside of an object. You might think that sounds a little scary, but isn't that what we see every day in our real life world? You have a body object, you have a heart object inside of the body object. The heart object is made up of other objects. You have a car object. That car object has an engine object inside of the car object. So all these things where we have objects and objects, we see them all the time. You have a classroom. The classroom object is made up of student objects. You have a computer object. The computer object is made up of inter internal parts inside the computer, whether it's RAM, CPU, hard drive. Objects and objects is nothing to be afraid of. It's just standard object-oriented lifestyle that we deal with every day. So go ahead and create a brand new file. I called mine object in object.html. And I want you to take a moment and go ahead and type in all of this code. So I'll pause the recording, type that in, then we'll just briefly explain it because you've seen all of this in previous videos and then we'll start working with our classes. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. First of all in the body we have a button. This button has a label of display students and if you click on that button you're going to go to the display students function. We then have a field set to make a nice little box and remember in an earlier video we saw that this will make the box try to shrink down to the size of all the inputs. We have a legend for the text of that field set so we see that on the box. We have a label for first name and an input to get the first name, a label for last name, an input for last, a label for GPA, and an input for GPA, and then a button that says add student, and when you click on it, you're going to call the add student function. Then we have another field set with a label on it of course info, and a label that says course num, and an input for course num, a label for course grade, an input for course grade, and a button that says add course and if you click on it you go to the add course function and then the last thing we have in our HTML is a p tag with the ID of output so let's start writing some classes to work with information I want to create a class that represents a student the attributes are going to be first name last name and that's common between students we'll also have a GPA However, I first want to start with a base class, a more general class, something that's common between everything. So I'm going to come down here and in the body, I'll go ahead and start a script tag. And in this script tag, I want to make a class called person. And you saw this in previous videos. We'll have two attributes. We'll have the first name and we'll have the last name. That's all we're going to do for that class. We're not going to write a constructor, we're not going to write any methods, we're just going to have a class with attributes. Then we're going to write another class called student and that is going to extend or inherit from person. And we're going to add GPA. So this now says if I create a student object I'll get GPA as an attribute plus anything from person, which is first name and last name. We're going to write another class. This will be called course grades. And we'll have a course num attribute and we'll have a letter grade attribute. And we're going to say that in our world of academics, a student, which is of type person, has a GPA, a first name, and a last name, but they also have a course, and that's all they can take in our school, just one course, and then you are done, you graduate, and enjoy life. Wouldn't that be exciting to only have to take one course? So we're going to add another attribute to the student class, and we're going to call this attribute grades, and that attribute is going to be an object. It's going to be a new course grades object. So now for every student that we create someday, it's going to have a GPA, first name, last name, and another attribute called grades, which is going to be a course grades object, meaning it will have course num, 
and letter grade. So what does that actually mean? That means if I had a student called Buck Wheat and a GPA of 3.5 and then they had a course object, they would have a course num of whatever it is, we'll say 100, and they'll have a letter grade of an A. And I'll put both of these in quotes just because that's what we're going to be storing. And so this would actually create an object for the student, put Buck into first name, Weed in the last name, 3.5 into the GPA, and then it would put this inside the grade object, which would have a course num attribute and a letter grade attribute. Meaning, if I ever wanted to access that, let's say I had an object called O student, one of the attributes would be grades, and then the attribute for that would be course num. If you wanted to get the letter grade, it would be o student dot grade dot letter grade. So it's the attribute in the object, which is an attribute in the object. So how do we actually write code to do that? In fact, before I continue, let me say that one more time. Letter grade would be an attribute in the grades object, but grades would be an attribute in the student object. And so you'd say object dot object dot attribute. So how could we actually write the source code to make this work? Well, let's go ahead and start with our uh, add student function. And I'm just going to paste some code and then explain it to you. That way you don't have to hear me hard typing. So here's a function for add student. Now remember, up here, we said if you ever click on this button, go to the add student function. Here it is. This isn't a method. It's not inside the classes. Right? If I minimize these classes, we'll see that that function is not in the class. Not in the class. So we said add student. We want to work with some variable and make this a global variable that we can use everywhere. So let's come up here and in our script tag, let's create a variable called OStudent equals new student. This now creates a brand new student object when the web page is loaded. Since it's a student object, it'll be based upon the person class. So it'll get first name and last name. It adds GPA. And it says, I need a grades attribute, which will be a brand new course grades object, which will give you access to course num and letter grade. So let's go ahead and continue on with this function. We now said O student is equal to the new student object. Now in this case, we didn't really have to do that. Just declare your variable. We didn't create an object yet. So we created a variable. And down here we said, in that variable, Go make a brand new student object. Now that object is alive. We could have done it up top. You could also do it in the function. Since it's an object, you can say o student dot attribute first name is equal to go get the value from the first input or the input that has an ID of first, which is right here. So that's going to be the first name input. And then it says go get the value from the input of the ID last, store it to the last name attribute. Go get the GPA from that input, store it to GPA. And then what I did is I said document.getElementById course num.focus. This now will drop focus down to the other field set to this input. So it's waiting for you to do a course num now. Let's go ahead and add our function to do the courses. And I'll just paste that in, then we'll discuss it. So here's our add course. Remember, that's called when you click on the add course button. We said, go to the student object, access the grades attribute, and create a brand new grades object. Meaning, did I really have to do that here? Nope, it was already alive. Well, let's go ahead and just say we're going to have it an attribute and we're going to let the system create the course grades. However, will an end user know that? They might not. 
So maybe we just go ahead and leave this the way it is. And down here, we know that the O student already has a grades object created for it. Since the grades object is created for it, you can access the course number and the letter grade. And I just pulled those values out of your text box. So now we have a grades object inside of a student object. The course num is an attribute of the grades object. Grades is an attribute of the student object. So this is really an attribute in an object within an object. If I wanted to print that out to the screen, I could just go and write my other function called display students. Now remember, display students is called if you ever click on this button right here. And so in display students, I'm going to create a variable called s output, and I'm going to say go to the student object that was created and grab the last name and concatenate it with the first name, concatenate it with a break. Then let's append to our output variable, so we're keeping like a running total almost. Append to it the student object that has a grades object that has a course num attribute. And concatenate that with the student object that has a grades object that has a letter grade attribute. Add some breaks to it, and then we assign that to the inner HTML of our output p tag. And remember that was right here. Sorry about the ringing. So if I go ahead and run this now, let's see what happens. So I come to here, and first name, we'll type in Buck. Last name, Wheat, GPA, 3.5. Add student. Course number, 100. Course grade, A. And before I do this, Control-Shift-I, I want you to see what's happening in the object itself. Here's my add course method. I'm going to click on add course. Here's my student object. It has buck and wheat and one of the attributes is grade. Notice that grades is a grade object, a course grades object, and it has nothing in that attribute in that attribute. So now I'm saying go assign to the attribute for the grades object for the student object. Step through that. Let's take a look. Buckwheat, here's our grades object associated with buckwheat. It now has a course number of 100. And now it has 100 and A. So this is a student object, has a grades object, which is course grades. The attribute name is grades. The object is course grades. The course num is an attribute in that grades attribute, which is a course grades object, inside of the student object. And let's go ahead and run that, and then let's come down to the display function. I set a breakpoint there. I'll get rid of the other ones. Click on display students. Here's our student object. Go get last name. Student object, go get first name. Student object, access the grades attribute, which is a course grades object. Get the course number. Student attribute, grades attribute, which is a course grades object. Access the letter grades attribute, which is an A. So by the time we're done, this should print out our information in our P tag. And there it is, buckwheat 100 was A. And so how you can work with these objects is amazing because now you can put objects within objects. And they all just have their own attributes and they're all linked together. And all you have to do is just make sure that you set up your class correctly to where the attribute is an object inside of an object.